Hi everyone, welcome to this tutorial for Windy and Warm by Tommy Emanuel. Now, first off, let me welcome both Robert and Christopher on the credit roll as my first two top tier patrons. If you want to support the channel or if you are looking for tabs or notation files, then please head over to the Patreon site. Now, as I mentioned before, this is Tommy Emanuel's version of Windy and Warm. I am aware that this song is originally written for Chet Atkins by John D. Laudermilk, but I'm sticking so close to Tommy's version that I might as well include it in the series of tutorials I'm doing on his music. Now, this is a very, very important song for Tommy. This was the very, very first time he heard Chet Atkins play. I think it was on the radio. I, I, he's talked about it on numerous interviews in 1967. And this was the first time he heard Chet Atkins. And this was also the first time he heard somebody play fingerstyle guitar, meaning playing all the same, all the different parts at the same time. This inspired Tommy to pick up the guitar and go for a fingerstyle solo acoustic career. So it was a very important song to him. And in that light, a very important song to us too, since we are all trying to play whatever Tommy is doing. A few insights on the tune. This tutorial is made for beginners. That means beginning fingerstyle guitarists and more specifically guitarists who are ready to transfer from the absolute beginning songs towards more intermediate songs. You do need some basic understanding of open chords. You have to be able to play some bar chords. You have to have the basic boom chick bass pattern down, so the alternating bass line muted with the side of the hand, and some experience with uh, legato techniques, meaning hammer-ons, pull-offs, and slides doesn't hurt either. More advanced players might find the speed of the tutorial on the slow side. I'm going over each section in great detail just to make sure that I get as much people on board as possible. That being said, there is one thing that I address a lot, which is the left hand thumb. If you have watched Tommy play this song before live, then you might have noticed that he uses the left hand thumb over the side of the neck quite a lot in this song. This is, for a lot of people, uh, something that makes or breaks the chances of learning a tune if you want to learn this on, for instance, a classical guitar, or if you have smaller hands and you really struggle uh, with playing with the thumb over the side of the neck, then I have good news for you. In this song, it's actually possible to leave out each and every uh, time Tommy uses the thumb over the side of the neck and you can go for a bar chord or some other alternative fingering instead. Each time you see me use the thumb over the side of the neck, then just look a bit further ahead. I will address the other options so you can leave that thumb out and play it in a more traditional fingering. The tutorial itself is split in two. This is done so you can rewind a little bit easier. It's always easier to rewind to a certain part if there is only one uh, excuse me, if there's only a half hour of music or video on the play bar instead of a full hour. If you think this should be done differently, then just let me know in the section down below. In part one, we will be addressing the verse and the first bridge, and in part two, we will be addressing the other two bridge sections as well as the ending. That being said, I think it's about time we start playing. So let's get to work on this iconic finger style song. All you need is a guitar in standard tuning and a thumb pick. Tommy sometimes likes to play this song with the capo on the second fret. He often leaves the capo out as well. And I, if I recall correctly, the original Chet Atkins version was with the capo at the third fret. For uh, educational reasons, it's always easier just to leave out the capo altogether. We'll be moving up the neck quite a lot in the last section of the song. And it's easier if you don't always have to count up two extra frets or three extra frets because of the capo. So we're leaving it out. That being said, let's head into the intro. Here we go. I'm going to play it once and then the explanation will follow. <laughs> A simple Tommy Emanuel intro for a change. This is all played by the thumb, so there's not a single other digit joining in in the intro. On the right hand, it's nothing but the thumb pick. You're starting with a hammer on from an open E string to the third fret and then moving to like an A power chord voicing. And then it's all thumb work. 
and try if you play the bass note on the D string, try to get that G string as well in the same uh, hit with the plectrum. So it's single string, double, single, double, single. And you're just repeating that two times. One more time, really slowly. Maybe one uh, detail we better cover is I'm lifting the fingers or I'm releasing pressure at least in the left hand after each chord. So I'm not just pressing down and holding down the chord the whole time. Each time I play that D string and G string, I quickly lift or release pressure from the left hand as to cut the chord really, really short. That's the way to go for the intro. Now let's head into the verse. You'll be playing this one a lot throughout the song, so I'm going to play it one time, and then I'm going to go over it in great detail, just so you don't miss anything and you know all your different options. But first, this is how it sounds. That's the whole verse, one time through. Uh, there's a lot to unpack here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the basic melody into our fingers, but I'm going to leave out that bend just in the beginning. Then I'm going to add it in afterwards. I'll explain you as soon as we get there. So we're starting out with the bass pattern. We're working around an A minor chord and you're moving the bass pattern across three strings. So root note, open A string, D string, fifth, open E string, and back to the D string. Then we're starting out the melody with an open G string, hammering on with the ring finger to the second fret. If you see Tommy play this, you might notice that he's playing this with the middle finger, this hammer on, but again, in this song, he does this thing where he actually fingers two strings with only the middle finger, not in a bar chord, he's just pressing straight down and he's playing two strings like this. It feels really weird to me, I still haven't got it really down, so I'm just playing the A minor chord like most people actually would. So open G string and we're off. So you do that hammer on and as you land on the second fret with the ring finger, you play the A bass note at the exact same time. That's the beginning. Make sure you get that down before you add in extra notes and keep that in mind throughout the whole melody. Don't add in extra notes or don't progress throughout the other beats before you get the first part down entirely. That's with the second beat added. So three, four, one, two. Now we're adding in the third beat. And this is the first time you have to play a melody note that doesn't fall together in line with a bass note. So. So you get one extra melody note, the, the first fret on the B string, you have to play right after the bass note on the low E string. Once you get that down, we're going again for the pinky on the third fret. This is the note you will have to bend up, but right now we're not adding in that bend yet. We're just gonna play the melody note. We are going to add in the bend afterwards. So this will sound a little strange for the moment, but bear with me. You'll see right away where we're going. Mm -hmm. 
So that sounds strange now, I, I admit so, but keep at it. So just keep playing that third fret without bending it up. We're first going to add in the rest of the melody. On to the next beat. <laughs> The third beat of the second bar is just, again, the uh, C note, first fret on the B string and the A note, the second fret on the G string, but we're keeping that down already. We're just playing that A minor chord. So normally you shouldn't have to do anything extra. And right after that very last melody note, you're playing the very final bass note of those two bars really slowly As you can see, we're leaving out that bend and what is left is a rather basic melody. There's nothing too difficult about this. But as soon as we add in that bend, you will notice that both your left hand and your right hand are going to start doing really strange things. For one reason or another, adding in that bend sort of messes up the whole technique uh, when playing this melody. So now you know what it feels like when the thumb pick just keeps going all the way through without any interruption and what the rest of the melody should feel like. Now we are going to add in that bend. That's the only thing we're changing. So one more time, the basic melody. It was the basic melody without the bend. One more time. with the bend. And that bend is rather difficult to do in the beginning. If you do it the way Tommy does it, you're bending up with the pinky. Now bending up a string with the pinky on an acoustic guitar will take quite some strength. Make sure that the pinky actually gets somewhat underneath the string so you have enough force to push up the string and what might I so what might also help is adding in the ring finger for extra support and helping that pinky to push it gives a rather strange fingering if you do that and then the ring finger has to jump from the G string to the B string to add in to add some extra support for that bend on the third fret now, even that might not be enough for uh, especially some guitars. I remember I learned to play this song on a really cheap, crappy acoustic guitar and with really heavy strings with a really high action. And I found it nearly impossible to bend the string with my pinky. So what did I do? I changed it around a little bit. I'm explaining this because it might be a solution for you as well if you uh, struggle bending with a pinky or if you have the, the feeling that your guitar is actually holding you back. This might be a solution. And this is so ingrained in my fingers that you will probably see me do this throughout the rest of the video as well. So now you know what's going on. I used to do this. I used to swap over to the ring finger, dropping that A minor fingering for this ring finger and middle finger, both on the B string with more than enough strength to bend up that uh, half step to the fourth fret. And then I would switch back straight to that A minor chord really slowly. So you need to swap back rather quickly, but I always found this a lot easier. 
see what works for you. If you want to go full Tommy Emanuel and, and use his method all the, the way through, then go for the bend with the pinky. If you find it hard or if you find it impossible to do on a cheaper acoustic guitar or on a guitar with really heavy strings, then go for the ring finger. You not changing anything, the rest of the melody is exactly the same. So one more time with the pinky, with the ring finger, back to the pinky, and the ring finger. So I don't hear any difference between two versions and like I said that the bend with the ring finger is so ingrained in my uh, technique in how I play the song that you will probably see this pop up quite a lot during the tutorial of the video. You can play it however you like it, with the pinky or with the ring finger. There is one extra thing that I would like to explain concerning the bend. Tommy plays this in two different ways. Either he does this and he playing that third fret the second time around when the bend is already released. first possibility and in some other versions he likes to play this that D note on the third fret the second time around while the bend is still coming down so you get that effect see so so that drop of the bend that is included in the melody difference so the second time around that drop in the bend is included in the melody without the descending bend with the descending bend it's a it's a little detail but it makes a difference so Tommy likes to swap this around. Sometimes he plays an entire version with the descending bend included. Sometimes he plays an entire version with all, always just a simple picked note or fretted note, sorry, at the third fret. And in some other versions, he likes to swap it around and change it around throughout the duration of the song. Whatever you think sounds best, make sure to uh, in, uh, integrate it in your version as well. Okay. So those were the first two bars with a lot of extra explanation and possibilities. Let's move over to the next two bars. Just one more time the repetition. That was the third bar is exactly the same thing as the first bar. And then the, the really typical bluesy lick sliding up to the fifth fret. If you play the bend with the pinky, you will want to do that slide up with the pinky as well. If you play the bend with the ring finger, you will probably slide up with the ring finger. Doesn't really make that much difference in between. To the third fret on the high E string and make sure that fretted note on the fifth fret keeps ringing out. So you're playing an open E string, third fret, sliding up to the 5th fret and make sure that 5th fret on the G string keeps ringing out while you play that G note. Back to the 3rd fret, pull off to the 1st fret, to an A, 2nd fret on the G string, pulling off to an open G. then you're straight off in the next uh, bar of the melodic section. Let me put that together. So you're offsetting that lick with an open E string. So right before you launch into that slide, you're playing an open uh, E string a little bit earlier than you might expect. It's not on the first beat, it's right before the first beat. Then again, the bend. And that 
that's the ending of each verse. So we already know that. Moving to an E minor chord and back to an A. That's the whole verse. So as you can see, that first bar is repeated three times and the melody in between those bars is something different each time. So the first time around, you get a bend. Second time around, the lick. Back to the bend. And the E minor chord. That's the whole verse. I'm gonna play this one time through really slowly so you can follow along and maybe pick out some things uh, you missed along the way and then it's on to the next section. Here we go. that very last bar Tommy often likes to play like this open A minor chord don't put too much uh, volume in it it's, it's rather a fill than really an accent or, or something percussive that comes along on to the next section now the next verse is identical is exactly the same thing let me play it a bit more up to speed to the first bridge. I think there is not really a verse and chorus structure in this song. It's a verse each time or a chorus each time, whatever you prefer. And then it's uh, alternated with a different bridge section each time. So we get the first bridge, we're heading in this now, and then there is a second and a third bridge as well. The first bridge is rather easy. Let me play it for you and then I'm gonna come back and explain. To the next verse. Now, as you can see, the, this bridge is built around a pedal tone, so you're always playing the open A string all the way through, and you're moving up a melody in thirds. You're starting with it. two open strings, G string and B string, hammering on to the first and second fret at the same time, moving to the third and fourth fret then adding in the pinky and the ring finger on the fifth fret and then we're moving back down with the exact same finger fingerings ending on a partial a minor chord doing this with the bass line underneath outlining each melody note with a bass note underneath. That's already the next two bars. So the first two bars. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Then the next two bars are the exact same thing, only the last bar, the melody, is spread out a little bit more. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Back to back. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Then it's back to the first melody. A little variation. Sammy, Tommy sometimes likes to play this variation the first time around, the second time around. This is something he changes out around a lot when he plays this song live. So what happens is the first section is the same thing. So two eighth notes, then an open bass note and in between 
that low A minor chord voicing. Just that last bar separately. So you get that rhythm down, that's the only variation in here. Then moving to an F chord. Tommy likes to play this F chord with thumb over the side of the neck, but it's not really necessary. If, you, if you're comfortable doing this, then by all means go ahead, then you get an, an F sixth chord. So first fret with the thumb over the side of the neck, third fret on the D string with the ring finger, second fret on the G string with the middle finger, pinky third fret on the B string, and then the index finger on the high E string. Only change that is made is you're leaving out that first fret really shortly and then adding it in straight back again. With a little pull off at the end. If you want to play this without a thumb over this side of the neck, you could just play a bar, but then you can't play that pull off on top. And you just have to pluck it again with the right hand. All I'm doing now is raising up that bar and putting it back down again. With the thumb, you can play that little pull off on top, then to an E dominant 7 chord. There's a lot of ways Tommy plays this. Sometimes he likes to leave the chord ringing out. Sometimes he likes to make it really short like I just did. So an open E string, which he mutes right away to an E dominant seventh voice. Second fret, middle finger, first fret, index finger, third fret with a pinky. And then really snapping those pull-offs. From the first fret pull-off to an open E string, then from the ring finger, third fret on the B string to the first fret. And you're back into the verse. So, or you could play it longer. Whatever takes your fancy, whatever you think sounds best, go ahead with it. Let me play the first bridge a bit slower so you can really pick out the last details and then we'll continue to the rest of the song. you can hear it. So I'm going to interrupt myself really quickly. That was the verse and the first bridge. The second bridge, the third bridge and the ending is featured in part two, which is available on YouTube just as the very first section. Have fun. See you next time. Bye bye.